Hedge Hedge Tube Dwellers, welcome to another Mad Bag Gamer production. Today, we're going to be killing the Skeleton King on Inferno difficulty, the first in a series of Inferno boss kills. Now, I've already played through Act 1, and uh, as far as if you were to be doing Skeleton King boss runs, the best way to do it, and I am going to do it with five stacks of Nephilim Valor, uh, go to this quest right here, Reign of the Black King, the Royal Crypts, this will give you the waypoint very, very close to the Black King, very close to the fight. And then you can go out and back to the crypts and fight some champions and some heroes to get your Nephilim stacks up. We're going to take a quick breeze through my equipment and skills. Um, oh, it looks like I've got some full inventories to get rid of. Um, note that the same restriction that goes for the last playthrough I did, the end of uh, Act 4 in Hell. Um, I am gimping myself for this fight. So I have a thousand damage bow. Uh, I also have a below 700 damage bow. Uh, this below 700 damage bow more closely reflects the gear that I had when I first attempted Inferno, or I should say when I first started actually working in Inferno, getting things done. Uh, do note that I, I grinded hell for gold for quite a while and uh, sharked the auction houses a little bit. Eventually got a couple different pieces of gear that brought me up to uh, being able to survive Inferno. Um, so this is still not as as weak as I was when I just cleared Hell. Um, but it is much weaker than where my character is now, which is a little over halfway through Act 2. I'll be using this bow, and then you can see my stats. Uh, note that this damage is due to a perk. Uh, it's around 23,000 without the perk. That is heavy stack on damage. You'll note that I only have 27,000 hit points. So that is a very low amount. Of course, I am a demon hunter, so uh, you expect it to be low. I'm stacking totally into damage so that I can uh, just do it as fast as possible and then try to evade like mad. Now, I'm not going to read through each of these skills because it's the same build that I've been using. Um, if you want a lot of information on just the way I use all the different abilities and, and how I fight, I would say watch the last couple. I will note that uh, punct Puncturing Arrow is kind of a switch out and Companion is kind of a two easy switch out skills that you can switch for about anything. This one for about any of your primaries. I use Puncturing Arrow strictly for heroes with invulnerable minions. Uh, the Pierce damage gets damage, just some damage to the hero more often than anything else that I, I've come up with. So uh, it lets me just keep ticking away on him. Uh, now I'm going to go get five Nephilim stacks by going to, uh, and I guess I could just uh, point at that at least, going out here to the Cemetery of the Forsaken. And uh, I'm just going to go in each crypt and kill champions and heroes until I have five stacks. And then I'm going to come back out and I'm going to go to the Cathedral level 3, which will line me up to go meet King Leo quite quickly. Aha! I have gotten all five stacks of Nephilim Valor, so I will now return promptly to town and go down into the crypt. The Cathedral level 3 will have a few hoops for me to jump to. Uh, just a couple enemies that I have to kill, and then I will go into the Royal Crypts themselves. Uh, and then, I'll be going off to see King Leo and defeating him. How oh, a whole nother level I had forgotten! So we'll have to go through the Cathedral level 4. That may mean uh, you could probably come this way with uh, just three Nephilim Valor stacks, and probably get all of them by the time you get to the Skelly King. And I finally made it to King Leo's ornate door. King Leoric, the Black King. Oh, there that ugly bastard is! Now, as I run in here and activate King Leoric, I want to say a couple things. Uh, first and foremost, this is not the most efficient way to get gear if you're in Act 1. You should probably go ahead and progress. If you can get this far, you can basically get all the way through Act 1 in Inferno. You should do Warden and Butcher runs. Uh, I may eventually do that. I will show the defeats of each boss, and I'll, I'll probably mention this is where you should start uh, for uh, each different bit. Uh, another thing, there are no official wikis out right now that have good information. Um, there are no boss statistics on King Leo. Uh, I saw something in a form that indicates that he has about 15 million hit points in uh, Inferno, which is somewhat regular. I'm losing a little health there. I need to get some back. I'm going to use a chunk of discipline to go into shadow power mode, I take less damage, and I suck more health. That hit barely did anything to me because it caught the very end of my shadow power mode. 
Here in a second he's going to spawn his enemies again. Um, he has the blink strike that you've seen me dodging. Uh, he does a little bit of a telegraph on that. He has a specific animation that he does right before he does the blink strike. Um, you have to at least be running when he does the blink strike, when he disappears for it, to, uh, to get away from it well enough. And I did not show you a good example of it right there. He uh, also has this little strike, which is an AoE on all sides of him, where he steps forward. Again, it has a special animation. That was a pretty good dodge of his blink strike. And then he summons minions. Every time he summons minions, he will do it twice. He'll summon two packs of minions, and he'll summon them on your location. So if you're doing little stutter steps, you'll be right next to a big pack of minions. You can do whatever the AoE of choice is. Or if you're like me and you have an attack you can use to drain health, and if its health drain is proportionate to the number of enemies you hit, you can keep them alive and then use them whenever you need them to soak a lot of life steal. Note also that after uh, King Leo teleports, or I'm sorry, um, he only does the summon minions after doing a random teleport away from you. He'll normally teleport off screen. Uh, after the minions, he will teleport back uh, on screen. Here's an example of the loot. It looks like we've got six blues and one yellow. I'm overburdened. Oh uh, boy. Um, here, I'm going to throw out these things right here just for the sake of looking at these right now. And I'm going to get instead this screaming mask, and I believe these. Yes, that thing. Okay. Um, there's two more items that I still can't pick up. Jesus, this is a pain in the ass. Okay, so nothing in the blues, really. I don't really expect much in the blues. Uh, those are two decent stats together. Um, I've seen tank wizards, and resistance to all elements is nice. Um... Resistance to all elements is is beautiful in Inferno. It's if you can get it on uh, armor, that's almost always something I don't like go away from. For example, I go away from melee attackers take damage on hit because they don't hit me, and uh, a lot of nothing, which is what you should expect in Inferno. A whole lot of no items worth anything except for vendor trashing. Uh, I've been running Inferno for quite a while, and the main thing that I've gotten that's helped me is gold to go spend on the gold auction house. I wouldn't touch the real money auction house, it's nuts. Anyway, that's a King Leo kill, and there's the example of some paltry loots. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.